Hey everybody, Matumbo here. Welcome back to the channel. And today we are playing some more historic here on Magic Arena. And today, I mean, I just couldn't, I just could not stay away. You know, something just keeps pulling me into the combo. And you guys know what combo I'm talking about because it's on the screen. But real quick though, before we hop into today's deck, just want to remind everybody, as always, if you enjoy the video and you enjoy the deck, please, all I ask is that you like, comment, subscribe, check out all those cool links down below. Uh, we have the uh, the Twitch link, the Discord link, and the Patreon link. So again, uh, tons of ways you can interact with the channel, and anything you can do does help the channel immensely. So with that being said, let's just hop right into today's video. We are calling it Kiora's Best Bombardment. So not only does Kiora normally best the Sea God, uh, today she is going to be focusing on Haphazard Bombardment. Uh, it's something we wanted to do. And again, we are focusing on our favorite two card combo in historic really the old blood sun lotus field and we didn't really take advantage of playing haphazard bombardment in our last iteration of our blood sun lotus field deck just a few days ago and i figured you know what let's just go back to its go back to the roots and let's see what we can do here um we we kind of toyed around with a few different builds uh, one build, we had the Blue Mythos, the Mythos of Aluna in the deck. We also had Mirror Maids in the deck, you know, cards we could actually use to, to copy Haphazard Bombardment. And then we, at, even at one point, we even toyed with playing Yorian in, in the deck. Uh, but you know what? We're just going to try to stick with a very streamlined deck, and we're just going to try to slam down Haphazard Bombardments as quickly as possible, and then follow that up with Cure Best of Sea Gods, and if need be, Star of Extinction. But the real thing about this deck and what's going to make this deck a little bit more interesting than what we normally do with the old lotus field blood sun is we are going to have additional ways to cheat out the lotus field so normally we only have four ways to cheat out the lotus field and that is blood sun again blood sun is a three man enchantment it says when it enters a battlefield draw a card and all lands lose all abilities except for mana abilities so when you play a, Lo a blood sun and then you play lotus field Lotus Field loses all of the top three abilities. So it no longer has Hexproof, it no longer enters a battlefield tapped, and that you don't have to sacrifice two lands when it comes into play. So Blood Sun is, or I'm sorry, Lotus Field is just a land that taps for three mana because of the Blood Sun ability. So, however, there is another way to cheat out Lotus Field. A couple other ways here. We have three copies of Tail's End and we have four copies of Discontinuity. So, Tail's End, for two mana, it's an instant, it counters target activated ability, triggered ability, or legendary spell. So the, the ability that says when it enters the battlefield, sacrifice two land, that's a triggered ability. So if we, before we play Lotus Field, what you want to do is you want to, you know, press control, shift, whatever you have it set up on, on your, in your arena, um, to go into full control mode. So once you do that, you can play Lotus Field, and then it'll actually let you respond before you have to sacrifice land. So you can tap two land, cast tails in, counter the trigger ability for sacrificing the land, and then you're gonna have, you're basically gonna ramp three mana on that one turn. So really, really, really cool play. Uh, now with discontinuity, it's the same thing. So typically discontinuity costs six mana. Um, however though, if it's your turn, it costs four mana less, two, two colorless and two blue less. So this is gonna cost the same amount of mana as tails end if it's your turn. So I'm, I'm sure you can see where this is going. You can still go into full control mode. You play the Lotus Field. The Lotus Field is going to come into play with the ability on the stack. You can end the turn. So it says exile all spells and abilities from the stack, including this card. And then whoever's turn it is, discard, discards down the maximum hand size, blah, 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 blah. So we have an additional seven ways to cheat out a Lotus Field into play uh, on turn three, essentially. So we can ramp up to six mana on turn four. And we could just start casting haphazard bombardments, or we can start using discontinuities on our opponent's turn in order to just end the turn on their turn. And it's, we're going to be basically time walking them as well. So I really feel like this is going to be a little more aggressive than just playing, you know, Blood Sun, Mind Stone, stuff like that. We're just going to, we're actively going to be able to uh, have a bunch of ways to cheat the, the Lotus Field into play. And then at the same time, we're going to have re we're going to have cool cards to interact with our opponent because we're going to have tails, rent, tails End to counter, you know, activated abilities or triggered abilities that they're that they're using or even legendary spells like Planeswalkers, uh, Uros, stuff like that. Um, we also have, you know, discontinuity. A cool thing with discontinuity is 
you can wait until they cast something and it's on the stack and then you can cast this and it just ends the turn that card just goes away forever it's exiled um you can do this when people go to ultimate planeswalkers so like let's say somebody's about to ultimate their ugin and they minus 10 you can just say oh discontinuity the turn's over you don't get anything so there's just a lot of really cool ways to to use discontinuity uh and then really this deck is just a bunch of normal stuff you know we have four copies of storm's wrath we have two copies of anger of the gods maybe for some earlier creatures and this does exile creatures that die we do have four copies of chandra again chandra is the best red uh, planeswalker that there is so we are playing that this is going to ramp us again this is going to get us extra cards and it's going to kill a creature and it could just potentially be a game ending uh emblem if we do get to ultimate at minus seven we can start dealing five damage every time we cast a spell we still are playing four copies of Maze Mind Tomes because we want to be able to, you know, make the top of our deck look pretty good, you know, by the scry ability. Or if we need to draw more cards, we are going to be paying some mana to draw some cards. And uh, yeah, last but not least, again, four copies of Haphazard Bombardment so we can start killing lands, creatures, planeswalkers, artifacts, stuff like that. Uh, four copies of Cure, the best to see gods, really it's just to win the game. We're going to make 8-8 eight, eight, uh, Hexproof Krakens. We're going to tap all their stuff down and then we're going to start gaining control of their cards a couple star of extinctions just in case and then two copies of mass manipulation because we're hopefully going to have a bunch of mana to spend in this deck and why not you know make our opponent hit themselves with their own things you know maybe we want to take an ulamog or an uro that escaped or something along those lines and then just get there so yeah Gain control of X target creatures under Planeswalkers. So six mana takes one thing, eight mana takes two things, 10, ma 10 mana takes three things. And I think we're going to have the mana to do that. So that is going to be the deck. We are playing 24 lands as normal. Uh, again, a bunch of ways to cheat out um, the Lotus Field. And again, we have additional ramp in the form of Chandra. Uh, and yeah, we are playing 61 cards because why the heck not? So let's hop into the gameplay. We will see you guys at the wrap up. All right, <clears throat> let's do it. Do it to it. How many ways can we cheat out a Lotus Field? Oh, these ways. I wish we got to go first, right? No, I don't like it. I don't like it. <clears throat> well, I mean, we may just do this the old fashioned way, right? Just wondering if they're playing an Emery deck, which they probably are. I was really hoping to save. <clears throat> I was hoping they were gonna try an Emery on turn two or their last their last turn three. All right, Karn, go get your Paradox Engine or whatever you're going to get. Go get your Paradox Engine. Or maybe they get Forsaken Monument. If they get Forsaken Monument, we can Tails End that. So if they do get Forsaken Monument, I'm going to play another Blood Sun. That is going to be the plan. Witch's Oven. I mean, I mean, I just do this, right? And just kind of crap in their cereal, so to speak. I mean, now they can't, now they can't use any of their artifacts. Okay. 
Seems pretty good. I don't want to just run out and... Let's see. So, does that... Yeah. Let's counter that. No! Oh. oh, what a great way to beat an artifact deck, right? Ah, oh, take their Karn. Just let them... Let them freak out. Yep. It's a good game one. Alright, that's good. Oh, what a world we live in, right? Hydrate, everybody. Hydrate. Let's, uh, let's have another game like that. Um, hmm. <laughs> I feel like this is one of those borderline hands. I'm going to keep it. Right, we just have so many ways to get this into play. All right, they're on a mold of five. Red deck, they'll probably win, right? Oh, man. All the Maze Mind Tones. And worst case scenario, I mean, we just play Lotus Field on turn three. It's not the end of the world. Um... Yeah. We're just going to do it this way. It's going to hope we live until turn four. Okay. Okay. That's a lot of damage. We're at, we're at nine already. Gonna get these going, right? Oh, well, those are two of our finishers to the bottom. Burn, burn kills us, I guess, right? Be kind of a ridiculous. Okay. Okay, well. A hazard bombardment. Well. We don't really. Wow. Wow, wow. Um, yeah, I think we keep that. And I think we do scry, even though we know what's on top. Okay. Yeah, so we are going to scry, because this is going to give us life. So, let's... And... Yeah, we're just going to make sure our opponent just can't get this into play. Which they could have, had we not done that. So, big brains, right? And now we're sitting pretty at uh, 10 life, essentially. Whew. Opponents. I mean, he was on a mole to uh, to five, so that was kind of bad. They probably, they probably went on a non-mole hand. Oh, well, next game. Ooh, instant pairing. Game number three against the, uh, the growly bear. Hey, game, why don't, why don't we ever get to go first? Energy. I don't like it. Don't like it. 
Uh, see how good would that have been? Oh, make some tokens. They just go land Whirler Virtuoso or land uh, land artifacts, but ooh, they don't have it. Interesting. Kill that thing, right? Gonna waste all your energy in response. Generate more energy for your shenanigans. Well, don't have anything to do this turn. Next turn, though. Oh, game is over. Game is over. GG's Growly Bear. Oh yeah, we knew that was happening. You don't draw that fourth land for that uh, Etherworks Marvel, and it is not happy fun time. So, oh, good game. And again, though, if they would have had like a um, some form of counter spell, they could have countered that, and then drawn a land and gotten it. And because we could have, there was an argue. Uh, there was an argument to keep mana open just tails in the Aetherworks Marvel, but we don't do that. We cast, we slam down Haphazard Marmot all day long. All right, on to the next one. Yep, definitely. Let's keep the streak going. Um, That is not a good draw. We have what uh 21 mana in five cards that's a mulligan um i do think we have to keep this and i think the card we have to get rid of is kiora this is a little awkward right um got a little bit better okay Blood Sun actually makes this hand really good. Oh, they're fr look at how look at all the friends. Really? Oh, I legit thought they were about to sack here just to. Uh, maybe they are. Maybe they are. You don't want more mana next turn? Okay, they got something. Hmm. <laughs> well, 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 well. I guess we're going to discard a Blood Sun if we need to. It's an interesting deck they're playing, right? Oh, sorry. Should I say oops? Should I say oops? Oh, uh, they said oops. Sorry. So... I think we just go ahead and do this now. This will get rid of the priest. Oh, wow. Six mana Liliana. I guess we just discard a steam vent, right? Okay. Yeah, I think... I 
think we do that. So we're down to three mana. Oh, and now we are on the haphazard bombardment train. This is him. This is seeming pretty good, right? Oh, blood sun into blood sun. Let's get rid of that red mana. You have to assume they're playing Croxus since they're playing red. Okay, well that is a card that's really not going to do anything. I'm not, really, I'm not even going to play anything. This, this gives us two discards. Um, yeah, I guess we have to play this now, right? Oh, I clicked the wrong one. Ah, oh, whatever. Whatever. Make them wonder. Like, what are they actually doing over there? Well... I mean, good news is they're not doing much of anything, right? Sure. Um, this is going to be something good. Today's my lucky day. And we'll go ahead and draw a card. Oh, we just had all of those in a row. Want to keep up the discontinuity mana. Um, that turns this on, right? All right, let's get this game over with. Quick, quick, quick. Yep, we are definitely going to cast that. I mean, it's fine. We just literally have to cast two spells to win here. Even if they go creature, creature with this Priest of the Forgotten Gods, make a sack. Not even gonna pause here. We have we have enough spells. Uh, Blood sun for the win, right? <laughs> Good game. Oh, we grabbed the Maze my Tome, not the Blood Sun. Either way, that was a fun, that was a fun inter an interactive game. Oh, good game, my friend. Uh, that was a sweet game. We did all the things we wanted to do. Our mulligan turned out to be pretty good. All right, so really like to go first one of these games. I'd really, really, really like to go first. That's not a gate, is it? Nope. So what, what kind of weird Jeskai budget deck are they on? They just go... I think we're fine with the red Honden, right? You don't target yourself?
Yeah, we just have, we just have to counter the more important Hondans. No counters here. That's that's good to know about, right? Don't really get to do anything this next turn, but the following turn, well, it's definitely a Han and we wanted to counter. So we get the discontinuity into Kiora. Seems pretty good. So I wonder if they're playing any shrines, right? The fact that this hit is pretty good, even if they like wrath away. Oh, okay. Yeah, I was about to say, even if they wrath away our 8 8, we're still going to be able to gain control of something in a couple turns. And then next turn, we just get to play another Kiora. Good game. Oh, yeah. Let's go. We had to take a quick little, quick little uh, dinner break. Interesting. I guess we keep. What do we show them first? What do we show them first? Let's show them. Let's show them Island. Island's a little more annoying. They're already playing red. They know what red looks like. All right. Let's let's take a peek. We know what we're looking for. They're playing Feather? I don't know what they're playing. Um, <laughs> God, I really kind of want to keep that. But we are on a mission. That mission is... Haphazard and Bombardment. Pirate's Pillage. What is your deck? Oh, okay, okay. Token, Sack, get Emrakuls. Or not Emrakuls, but uh, Ulamogs. Let's do a deck one time. Not what we wanted. Still not really what we wanted. Alright, let's steal some damage. Force them to deal with Chandra. If they don't, we actually get to have Hazard Bombardment now. Yeah, but I think they get to uh, Indomitable Creativity here now, though, right? For... Yeah, I think that's what's about to happen. I think that's what's about to happen. Exile. I think we just have to go for this, right? Do we hit the artifacts? No. Still, I still think that's better. We do it for two right now? I guess, well, three now. Alright, so this is going to... Maybe they're not playing Indomitable Creativity. Maybe they're just playing really weird cards. No, they... Okay. This is uh, quite intriguing. We will survive this crisis. I'm... Uh... <laughs> 
I'm uh, kind of glued to what's going on here, right? Helm of the host. Shenanigans. Yeah. Did it. And that was a pretty good draw. If I do say so myself, that was a really great draw. We get to hit a land here. So that's legendary. Why would you get another one of those? No attacks, huh? No attacks. So I think we try to let's see what we get. I mean, we're gonna kill Nahiri, right? Oh ho 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 ho. Yeah, we're gonna kill Nahiri. Oh. Murmured for Mr. Mr. Ed. Come back. Yeah, I don't know exactly what you're doing. I, I, I actually do like the Helm of the Host Nahiri shenanigans that you were pulling off. I really wish I could see the rest of your hand. But uh, yeah, nonetheless, good game. Good game. All right, final boss. All right, final boss. We want a good game. We want to win that game. We want a great, perfect draw. And uh, we want to go first. So, just all the things. Can we get all the things, please? Ooh. We got any of the things yet, right? So, have to mulligan that. Have to mulligan that. We're keeping. We're keeping. We're keeping. Do you think we have to keep removal over? Yeah. I do think that was correct. However, this deck can just grow a creature out of control pretty quickly. Oh, they didn't, they didn't attack. Okay. That's good. And we drew the third land for the Blood Sun. Eh, no thanks. I'm like, no, thank you. But I think as a as a final boss, right, that this opponent is going to overcommit and then we're just going to get them. Right? <clears throat> I mean I'm not gonna I'm not gonna Storm's Wrath yet. Yeah. Alright, you did it. Alright, well, I still don't want to Storm's Wrath, right? Um, yeah, I'm just gonna keep hitting next. They play something ridiculous, then we just end the turn. Um, sure. Go and get your veto back. Sure. Oh, you are living the dream, my friend.
You are living the dream. No attacks. Okay. Oh, that's a, a good follow-up. We do have another one. Not too concerned. Oh, are they going to get another veto? Just keep, just keep on doing it. We can, we can gain control of two creatures. More than two creatures. I guess we're just going to start attacking their white mana. Oh, come on. Come on. All we did was attack some white mana. You are still going to have plenty of mana left. All right, we're going to go one more game, right? This is a... Uh, this deck's working surprisingly well, so... One more game. I mean, we have to do one more. Right? 100% after that. After that. All right. Jabaterino. What a great name, right? Opponent goes first. Hmm. Hmm, well, this has the makings of a decent hand. They're on a mulligan. Oh, but, but they're on red. We read something, right? No, goblins? No, it's not goblins. It's not goblins. Is this this, like, red... Oh, it is goblins. Holy. Holy goblins, right? Holy goblins. Ooh, haphazard bombardment. Not something we really want to be drawing. Oh, no. Cranko. Mob instigator. Holy. We're at 10. Get out of here, goblins. Do we... Yeah, I think we have to. I need another land. They can't mux us here. Cranko's like... The only thing they can really do. Again, we want to land. It's a regular old land, right? And I guess, you know, a land doesn't really do anything. Sure. You have cycled. gonna keep them off of a Cranko this turn. Goblins. Oh, it feels so good to kill goblins. Oh, goblins get out of here. Again, they're like cockroaches. You can keep beating them and beating them and beating them. But they just pop up when you when you think you get rid of them. They just keep coming back. Alright, well, let's talk about this deck. Alright, everybody. Welcome back to the wrap up. We had a ton of fun playing this deck. Um, yeah, this deck. Um, what we go? We went undefeated. We went eight and zero. We had uh, a bunch of games. A bunch of we won a bunch of different ways. Yeah, our opponent scooped some games. Um, we we played the extra game again because our opponent scooped anyway. We beat goblins. We stole planeswalker. You know at, at that one game I think it was that we. Um, stole a Karn, and then our opponent was just like, oh, well, can't really do anything anymore. So, yeah. And then we got to abuse discontinuity. Um, you know, Haphazard Bombardment did what it's supposed to do. Kiora Best of Seagod did what it's supposed to do. Uh, Chandra, you know, does what she does. And again, I really feel like um, having all of these additional ways 
to cheat Lotus Field into play really helps it because once we get one Lotus Field in play, it's not really, we don't really need to focus on cheating any other Lotus Fields into play because at that point we should have six mana. And then I think just, you know, casting those discontinuities or the tail's end on our opponent's, you know, creatures or their, you know, their spells uh, is just really backbreaking. Um, discontinuity in itself, just, uh, you know, ending the turn on somebody being able to, um, not only are you ending the turn, they don't really know that it's coming because it's it's an instant, it's on their turn. You're just flat out ending what's happening. You're just putting a stop to everything they're doing. You're taking away a potential bomb threat that they could be casting, um, a, a, an interaction that they've been you know banking on and hoping that that they've been able to do. Uh, and then you're also um, you know potentially taking away their attack step as well. So there's just so much you could do. You could be taking away card draw if you do it during their upkeep. Uh, you're just taking away so many resources and so much interaction from, from your opponent when you're casting discontinuity. So um, that's why we played four discontinuities over um, four copies of Tales End. Um, this, you could still easily switch to four, four copies of Tales End in addition by maybe cutting um, one of the other cards, like uh, maybe one Kiora Best of Sea God or something along those lines. Um, or you could cut two Star of Extinctions because maybe you don't want to play Star of Extinction because it is a mythic and maybe you're just trying to cut back on the cost of the deck because this deck is very expensive. Because um, if you did cut out, like let's just, for example, let's say you cut out two Star of Extinctions, you could go up to one one more copy of Tales End um, and then that's it because we are playing 61 so if you do cop if you do cut two cards out put in one tails end you're up to 60 so potentially you could do that but i i always really like playing copies of star of extinction especially in a ramp type deck because you could just cast it on turn four you could just um you know get your opponent to concede sometimes you know sometimes it's just so unrecoverable um you know your opponent drops you know just drops their entire hand and you know maybe some of their creatures are bigger than a storm's wrath so maybe you have some five fives or some six sixes well star of extinction doesn't care how big that creature is because dealing 20 damage to everything is going to end all of the creatures in play obviously unless it has indestructibility uh, but then having a mass manipulation really to just kind of recover after that is just really good so a bunch of different ways you could build this deck, but I do feel like the additional seven ways to cheat in the Lotus Field really helps this deck ramp and get to where it needs to be, um, you know, quick enough. So yeah, got to beat some cool decks. Um, but yeah, again, if you enjoyed the deck in the video and uh, liked what you saw, please, all I ask, like, comment, subscribe, check out all the cool links down below, the Twitch, the Patreon, the Discord link, uh, anything you can do uh, to interact with the channel, any of those things listed uh, is amazing and it does help immensely. Uh, so yeah, so uh, again, I hope everybody is staying safe. So stay safe, play some more magic, have some fun. We will see you next time. Remember, this channel would not exist without such amazing viewers and subscribers. Thank you so much for interacting with the channel and helping grow the community. And a very big special thank you to the Patreons listed here for supporting the channel. Thank <laughs> you.